underground conduits. Um, we use underground conduits to get across streets, parking lots, and then just keep so that your lawns aren't um, um, manufactured with a bunch of PEDs. So this underground conduit can be used for any type of uh, new service, um, remedial work, if you have a cut cable, these are all different things that you can use these conduits. As you can see, they all come in different sizes. Um, for environmental reasons, for rain, they should be capped off, kind of like this one. Um, but the these are getting cool. We have opened up. We have our underground cable coming in, um, and it is being connectorized to this four-port tap. And this comes in with an in and an out. Uh, this type of tap, just like our two-port, four-port, and eight-port tap that I've showcased before, are passive devices. Passive means they don't need power to work. The power comes actually from the signal itself. Uh, you can see that this one port here has a termination device and each device that is connected in the network um, will have a drop cable coming off going to the customer's service uh, network interface device or network, network interface unit. Taps that don't or that aren't in service should have this termination and that prevents any type of RF leakage. And you do not want RF leakage. The FCC regulates the leakage and um, there is a DB level that you can uh, uh, are allowed in your network and you'll go out and test your whole plant for um, any type of leakages on your system. Taps. Um, this is a pedestal that this tap is in, and this is an eight port tap. Okay, how you can tell that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It also has a DB level on there. That is a DB level that's used for networking, and you put this type of tap depending on your input signal, and that will convert with your output signal going to your customer's drop. So your, your F connectors, your RG11 cable, your RJ6 uh, drop cable will be coming off of this device. Uh, when this is in service, you're gonna have termination taps on these connectors so you don't have signal leakage. Uh, this tap is also grounded. Here's a grounding rod. Um, so any type of electrical surge, it'll take that signal and go directly to ground. Um, we'll have a variety of different other taps in these depending on uh, how many subscribers that are in your area. So in the previous videos, I showed two port taps, four aerial port drop. taps, and then an eight port. This aerial drop port is an eight port uh, tap. Um, it's connected to aerial strand. Um, you can see the expansion loop, and that expansion loop is in case of any type of uh, poor weather conditions, uh, ice on the line, any type of severe winds, um, that'll take care of that uh, expansion uh, in, so that your connectors don't pull out of the actual components. I know it's difficult to see, but that's an eight port uh, tap. And that's how this cable is constructed in an aerial environment. You can see on the pole, we have pegs that you utilize to climb up. Uh, they only go up so far so that you don't have other individuals climbing these uh, poles and cable TV drop. There is a two port tap. You can see the tags on there and it is has a beam clamp to the strand which then is attached to this customer's house. From there it goes to the NIU and then to the set top box.